<laughs> Welcome to Friday Calculus, which is just like every other day, but we're happier. Um, so we're halfway through an optimization problem. It's the problem of finding the point on this parabola that is closest to another point. And, and this is what we got so far. So I, I wrote two variables, which are the coordinates of the point I'm looking for. So there's a point somewhere in here. And, and well, it's going to have some coordinates, x, x and y. Seems reasonable, reasonable that those are, have to be my variables. Um, and th there's a relation between them because x, y has to be on the parabola. Like, otherwise, I would just make it 1, 4. And that's the closest point to 1, 4. But that's not in the parabola. Um, because it doesn't satisfy the equation. So they have to satisfy the equation y squared equals 2x. So I could solve for x there. Um, and then there's the quantity that I want to minimize, which I already wrote a formula for, but I'm trying to minimize the distance between these two points. And if I have the coordinates of two points, I can always write down the distance um, using the using the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem would tell you that the distance well, the distance would be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And that would mean that its square is the sum of the squares of the differences in the coordinates. So, um, I want to minimize this distance. It depends on x, y. So I'm going to have to write it in terms of one letter. Um, and then take its derivative, find the critical points, and figure out which one is the minimum. So uh, I could do that, but I could also be lazy and make my life a little easier. Uh, noticing that that square root is not doing anything. Um, the thing is, uh, why not? Why not just look at the square? Instead, minimize the the distance squared. So if at some point the square of the distance is the smallest possible, then the, the distance without the square is also going to be as small as possible. Um, So um, why make my life hard when I can, why take the derivative of a square root of a whole thing when I can just take the derivative of a polynomial? There's no reason. Uh, so I'm going to minimize the, the square distance function. <clears throat> so we want to agree that minimizing the square is the same as minimizing the distance. Well, I agree. And it's 7.34, so everyone else is sleeping. I should whisper so I don't wake up the children. 
Okay. So I know that uh, y squared has to be 2x. I want to minimize uh, 4 minus y squared plus um, x minus 1 squared. So why not uh, solve for x in terms of y since it's easier? And then we will have that the distance squared is 4 minus y squared plus y squared half minus 1 squared. Let me call this g of y. So this is a function I have. I want to find the minimum of. Uh, so let's find the critical points. By taking its derivative and seeing where it's zero. So, okay, so I have stuff inside, inside of a square. So I got to use the, the chain rule. So the derivative of the square is the twice function. Derivative of u squared is 2u. And then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which in this case is just negative 1. And this one is sort of the same. I have, well, the outside function is still the square. And the derivative of the inside is y. I get a two from the square coming down if we take the derivative and it cancels with the two in the denominator. So, um, well, this is it. So g prime of y, if I multiply it out, I have negative eight plus two plus y cubed minus two y. Let's do y here. So it's y cubed minus eight. Well, if g prime of y is zero, if, if y is a critical point, this is gonna mean that y cubed minus eight is zero. And this is gonna mean that y cubed equals eight. And how many numbers are there whose cube equals eight? Or which numbers have their how many cubic roots does eight half? Two. Yeah, that's it. So negative two has cube negative eight. So uh, two is the only critical point. Maybe this function doesn't have a minimum, uh, but I think this is going to be it, though. So um, I can take I can I can use the first derivative test. Um, is If, if x is smaller than two, sorry, not x, y. If y is smaller than two, the derivative, uh, which is y cubed minus eight, well, um, if, if the number is smaller than two, its cube is gonna be smaller than eight. So this, the derivative is gonna be negative. And if y is bigger than two, 
the derivative is going to be positive. So um, the original function decreases um, up to or down to, I guess. And then increases forever, which makes it the global minimum. And we're pretty much done. Um, so y equals two is where the global minimum is, the absolute minimum is. How do we find x? We, we use the equation that relates x and y which is y squared equals 2x, which would make 2x equals 4, which makes x equals 2 as well. So the closest point is uh, 2 comma 2. Like you could already tell from my fantastic drawing, And that's it. <clears throat> Are there any questions? All right, I guess. Um, all right, another problem. Uh, so this one, um, so I'm gonna do one with uh, the kind of business people like, and the thing with business people is their math is the same, but they call everything, everything differently, which uh, I personally don't understand. But I guess we gotta learn the language in case they talk to us in that language. So, um, so when you're trying to solve the problem of how many X should I produce? No, supply, no. Uh, There's, you could also you could sort of follow this business recipe, which is the same as we've been doing. Write the function, take the derivative, make it equal to zero. Um, but um, the way the way. Um, What's happening? The way people. Oh, oh no. Oh, this was a mistake, wasn't it? And I forgot to join the meeting from my phone. Oh. Well, oh, you can see what I've been writing. Oh, boy. 
This has been stuck for a while. I wonder if you can hear me. Oh, oh, then I'm close, I think. Oh, now Zoom is frozen. X many of uh, something. <clears throat> so came back. It's just Windows deciding now is the time to use all your computer to download updates without in the background without letting you do anything about it. I'll just give Bill Gates a call after the class is over and he'll understand and stop sabotaging me. Um, if I'm producing something, like say I'm producing Windows updates and I want to inflict the maximum pain. No, I'm producing something I want to make the most money. Uh, so there's two functions that I probably care about and they just have a name. Um, the, the cost function which um, I guess we always call C. This is the cost of producing X many things. Or X times or X fluid analysis. Um, and then there's the the thing that is called either the price function or the demand function and i think well no in the book they call it lowercase b which i don't know if i can do a lowercase b that looks different no. Um, so that is, um, this is a kind of a strange thing. The price at which I can sell each unit in order to sell X many things. So I find this a bit strange. I mean, I guess it's good that uh, we have X means the same thing on both, but normally I would say the more natural thing is if you fix the price, how many people are going to buy your thing? But maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm not a business person. So maybe this is not the right way of thinking. Maybe the, the thing, the way of thinking that makes more sense is I want to sell a thousand things. What price do I make them? Uh, do I make it to sell a thousand things? <clears throat> As if you could get any number of sales by making things cheap enough. Anyway, if you if you look at this um, at these two functions. Um, then you can, if you if you knew these two functions, you can know how much money you're gonna make. Uh, you're gonna, uh, how much money you're gonna make by selling X many things is the total amount you're gonna charge minus the total cost. So um, the revenue, the revenue function, which is the um, amount of money. you receive from customers, um, I guess we call RFX, and it's uh, 
the price at which you sell each thing times the number of things. Very uh, deep economic theory here. If you sell three bananas for two dollars a banana, you are um, you're making uh, six. I don't know how many. Said. I think you're making six dollars. Um, so of course, your banana stand cost a thousand. So, um, so what is the um, what the profit function? Well, it's the amount of money coming in minus the amount of money going out. You probably want this to be positive and as uh, big as possible. Oh, is this going to be Things were supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Oof. Profit is um, the money in minus the money out. So um, this is what I want to maximize. And how, how do I do it? By, by finding uh, critical points. The, And I think, I guess what you expect is that the cost per unit increases as you make more. Um, so, I don't know, for some reason, when in economics it's solve this problem, they assume there's only one critical point and there's a minimum. Um, so if there's only one critical point and, the, and it's a minimum, you only need to find the point where the derivative is zero. But the derivative of the, of this difference is going to be the difference of the derivatives. And the derivatives, um, even though they're just derivatives, um, these are called, uh, this one is called the, the marginal revenue. And this is called it's called the marginal cost. They're just derivatives. Nothing, nothing new. Um, I don't, and I don't know why this is. Maybe it's, maybe some economist uh, thought they invented derivatives. Um, way after they were known by everyone else. <clears throat> so they would say, they will tell you that the maximum profit is achieved when the marginal profit is zero or where the mar marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. But I mean, you can use this language or you can not use it. I personally don't care at all. Um, I just want you to know it so that it's, if someone speaks to you like this, you will understand. So let's do an example. Um, I feel like the hard part here is knowing how many things you're going to sell beforehand. But I guess that's not, that's not a math problem, so we don't wonder. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the problem in the book. Um, you're selling TVs. It says flat screen TVs, um, which is, you guys might be too young to remember TVs that are not flat. Um, and you're selling them at some price and then a mysterious magical market survey says that um, for each, as you make it ten dollars cheaper, you will sell twenty more. 
Uh, okay. And then we're trying to figure out how to make the most money. Um, I guess we're not taking into account the costs at all, or maybe the costs are, are just um, always the same. <clears throat> so in this case, well, we, I don't, this, if I'm gonna do this kind of problem this kind of way, I, I don't need to think, I just, X is always the number of, um, number of TVs sold. And I need to find um, lowercase b of x. Uh, is the price at which I can sell x many TVs. So for example, it is telling me that if you if you sell, uh, if you want to sell 250, 200 TVs, uh, you can charge uh, $350. Seems really cheap. I guess I don't know what it, how much a TV is. I mean, this is in a week, but it doesn't matter at all. Everything is over the course of one week. Uh, but I need to find a formula for P of X. So, um, well, only one sentence there to figure out. Uh, so it says uh, for each $10 cheaper than I make it, um, I sell 20 more. So this is a linear function. This looks, the, the, the graph looks like a line. And the the line uh, as the as the price the line has a slope where as the price um, decreases by ten the number increases by twenty. So I still feel like it's 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 easier for my brain to do the other way around. Uh, but anyway. What's P of X? <clears throat> uh, so I want to sell. I just need to call the graph. Uh, Hundred and fifty, two hundred. So this is um, no, this is a unit. Um, three fifty. This not gonna fit, is it? <clears throat> So it's so it goes through 200, 350. And if the number, so uh, if the number of TVs sold increases by 20, P of X decreases by 10. So the slope of this, of this line. What's the slope of this line? It's an increase in price divided by the increase in X. What's that? One half. It's not one half. All right. I know why it said one half and your flips. Negative one half, there you go. 
um, the the change in, in price is negative for the change in um, for the uh, change in sales to be positive. So the slope is negative one half. So if the slope is negative one half, and I have the point 200 at 350, the equation of this line is p of x minus 350 equals uh, negative one half x minus 200. So if, if x is 200, I sell 350. And then uh, every time I increase x by 20, this function decreases by 10. So if I simplify it, x plus 100 plus 350 equals negative 1 half x plus 450. So that is the, the price function or the demand function. They're called, they're the same, two different names for the same thing. Um, so the revenue function fits over here uh, because again, this, I just wrote formulas for everything. So I just need to blindly apply them. The revenue function is just a number of units. Yeah. Does I just have, I just can't read what you had to put. Did you say that negative one half X plus 200 or 100? Uh, 100, sorry. Oh, okay. I say 100 and I write 100. So I'm multiplying negative one half and, and 200. Plus 350, which is going to be 450 plus 100 is 450. At some point, you have to start selling them at negative prices. Sir. You have to start paying people to take your TVs. Such is business. Uh, so, anyway, the revenue. Always has the same formula. It's the number of things you sell times the um, the price at which you sell each thing. So it's going to be x times the formula for p of x that I found uh, just now. So. Um, So those are the demand and the revenue function. <clears throat> and now let's try to maximize that revenue as you often do. <clears throat> so to maximize our effects, we need to uh, make the derivative, the marginal revenue equal to zero, which is to say we're finding the critical points of this function. function. Um, and I could use the product rule, but I'm not, I don't wanna, uh, I wanna just multiply it out and then take the derivative or find the marginal cost. So this is gonna be negative X plus 450. So, um, so the marginal revenue is zero when X is 450. So um, for our uh, revenue to be the maximum possible, we need to sell 450 TVs and the price is going to be 
um, two twenty five. And now, I mean, the thing is, I know this is a critical point, um, and I'm sort of saying it's got to be the maximum. And I guess this is a feature. I guess, I guess they don't teach it just in business club. Um, maybe they get told that whenever they find a critical point, it's the maximum or minimum. It's whatever they want it to be. Uh, that I should be worried um, that I, I found the minimum <laughs> instead or something like that. I guess from from how these problems work out in real life, you tend to only get one critical point and it tends to be the minimum. Or maybe I'm not talking about real life, I'm talking about business school problems. Uh, but either way, um, I guess we're told to assume that this is the minimum. I could use the I could use the first derivative test um, just over here. Notice that r prime of x is uh, positive if if x is smaller than four fifty, and r prime of x is negative if x is bigger than four fifty. So I have some peace of mind that this is actually the global minimum because the function increases up to that point and then decreases. It's a parabola. So the read to equation. Um, uh, well, the question was asking, so I didn't yet answer the question, I guess. Because he was saying how large a rebate should I offer? Um, Well, um, the original price was three fifty dollars. Um, and I should be selling at two twenty five dollars. Uh, so the rebate has to be uh, one twenty five. You gotta read the problem and follow the instructions, otherwise. They start selling the, they knock the price down to $125 and they start selling them at $125 and they start losing money. And then the economy goes to a bad place. So. <clears throat> Any questions? I think we can do most of one more. Um, all right, uh, well, that's it for the economics. They're all the same, right? The B and the R and the C, well, there, there was no cost here, but right, whichever you need, you need that. Um, I like the geometry ones better. What is the largest rectangle that fits in a semicircle? Um, let's see over here, use one. Let's make make our lives um, easier. I mean, the shape should be the same no matter the radius. So um, I'm gonna give you a hint. The way to, it has this shape, um, one of the sides has to be the diameter, has to be a piece of the diameter. So, um, It's probably not this one because this one is tiny and it's probably e even less so this one because this one is also tiny. So it's, it's gotta be somewhere in between. 
so um, there's no numbers here. I guess the area. The area is the one I want to. The one I want to maximize. What should I? What else? What numbers can I use to specify the rectangle? There's more than one possible answer here. The area. Okay, but um, the problem with the area is that if I tell you the rectangle of area two, you're not going to know which one. It's, that makes it. I don't even know if there's a rectangle of area two in there. Uh, so I need something that makes it easier to describe the rectangle. Like some. Either, I mean, either some length or some angle, the diameter of the circle or the rectangle. What is the diameter of a rectangle? Okay, so, I mean, the circle has radius one. So the diameter is two. Um, I would guess that the diameter of a rectangle is a is a diagonal, but I don't know. Do you see those black rectangles in the screen? That means something is crashing. Oh, there you go. I don't want to work with that. I mean, for a thing that is not a circle, I would say the diameter is the longest distance you can find in there um and i don't know what to do with that like how do you find the area of a of a rectangle if i give you the diameter and it's always inscribed in a circle like you could do it but oof. i think given the the length the base and the height is uh, easier yeah So um, so that would that would make the area x times y. So at least the area is easy to write. So the question is, um, the question is, how do I know for which x and y uh, is the rectangle in the circle? So um, this is y, and this is 2x. So what equation relates x and y here? No, this is what <laughs> this is x, not 2x. But um, the distance from the center is x over 2. This is a circle. And it does have unit radius. So, um, all right, I don't have time to stare at the screen in silence. Um, oh, I have to do it. So right here, um, 
if I think of these as coordinates, this is going to be the point x over 2 comma y because well if the whole thing is x i could have just also called the half base x but it doesn't matter it's all the same and x halves comma y is in the circle if the sums of the squares of the coordinates, if the distance to the center is one. So there's a right triangle here with legs x halves and y and hypotenuse one. So this equation relates um, relates x and y, and I want to maximize the area, which is the product. So, any questions? I did try to do this differentiation. Um, I don't know if that's going to be easier or not. Um, so let's just let's just solve. Um, let's just solve for y. Y squared is going to be one minus x squared divided by four, because the uh, a fraction squared is the same thing as squaring the numerator and the denominator. And that makes y equals the root of one minus x squared divided by four. And then a of just x is going to be x times y. So, um, so it's this function. Okay, so I can take the derivative and use the product rule um, and just do the whole thing, or I could simplify it first. And then make my life easier. Um, I could write this as so x is positive. I could write this as a product of square roots. And then I could combine the square roots because the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. And this is going to be the square root of x squared minus x to the fourth divided by four. And now, instead of uh, maximizing the area, maximize the area square. Let's find the max of Because again, this is a positive number. If I maximize the square, it's the same as maximizing the original number. So I'm trying to find the max of x to the fourth minus uh, minus x squared minus x to the fourth divided by four. So take the derivative. Um, find the solution. This means that either x is zero or x squared is two, which makes x plus minus the square root of two. So I get x equals zero, x equals root of two. X has to be positive. And then. Where did x to the third come from? Shouldn't it? The derivative of x to the fourth. But shouldn't it be 4x to the fourth? Uh, yeah, you should. But there's a 4 in the denominator. 
Oh, it canceled. So, um, and now the, the maximum area is one of these two critical points or x equals two, which is the other, at least zero and a most two because uh, the base can't be longer than the, than the diameter. So try x equals zero, root two and two and see which one it is and then you're done. Uh, but I'm not gonna do it because uh, it's, it's officially the weekend now. Oh, I should say that your, your homework is rated and I can't publish it yet, but today I will. It went really well, probably the best grades so far. And also problem free, which was a, a disaster one. I rated, I was so generous. So. <clears throat> uh, stop recording.